Hi, I'm Vic Becker, and for this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use a blackboard to create an atmospheric painting of a mountain lion using just a few pastels. Okay, to start with, um, as we're working on blackboard, uh, the best way to get your image on there to begin with is obviously using a lighter coloured pastel or pastel pencil. For this I've used a hard white pastel using a rounded corner to keep it nice and soft so it doesn't dig into the paper too much. If you're buying one of the home workshop kits for this little tutorial, what you'll get is a piece of paper like that, yours will be A4, with the reverse image. So this is a mirror image of what we've got on there. If you want to use that uh, to trace your image onto the blackboard, all you need to do is, with a white pastel, just go around the bits that you want, around the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, etc. Turn it over, like so, against your velour, secure it in place with a little bit of masking tape, and with the side of your hand, or probably preferably with a soft cloth or a piece of paper towel, you can rub it through, and then what you'll get is the white pastel transfers onto your flat velour. Make life a little bit easier to start with. <coughs> so, once we've got our image on the paper, our basic image, what we need to do then is focus on the foundation, which is the tonal sketch. Now, those of you who have been following me before will know that I regard this as the most important part of the whole painting. The tonal sketch, the tonal underpainting, monochrome underpainting if you like. Uh, of course, when you're painting a black cat on black wall, for example, you could just use a, a white pastel and a black pastel for sharpening areas and erasing bits you don't want. But we'll come on to that later. So here's our basic outline. What I'm going to do is uh, use a hard white pastel still with a rounded corner so it's not too sharp. We don't need a lot of fine details in this anyway but any fine details we do want to put in, like whiskers and so on, always go in at the end, usually with a sharper corner of your pastel. So if you've got a brand new stick of pastel, which you will have in the uh, home workshop kit, just round off one of the corners on a bit of masking tape on your board so it's not too sharp. And that'll be a nice sort of sketchy corner to work with. So let's just begin to tidy things up a little bit. So we'll start with the ears and work down. So what I want to do, uh, remember of course, um, first of all, don't press too hard. Whenever you're working on more, always err on the side of caution. And don't press too hard, especially if you're working on sand or grey velour, not so much on black, but sand or grey velour if you're working with a black pastel, it's very difficult to remove it. With a white pastel on black velour, it's a lot easier to remove it. So you can virtually rub that away. If I rub that little section there hard enough, it virtually disappears. So kind of light to medium pressure to begin with. And let's just build up the layers little bit by little bit. So starting with some details in the ears, the little pouch that we have at the back of the bottom of the ear, which all cats have, enables the ear to move forward and backwards in all sorts of different directions. So we just round off some of these sharp corners. The great thing about working on black floor is that you know, if you've got some scruffy edges there from your initial sketch, don't worry about them because they'll rub down, they'll rub away. And you can always use a black pastel at the end to get rid of those anyway. So that's one of the great advantages, advantages of using black velour. Another advantage is that visually, visually it gives you a much more atmospheric, even dramatic look to your painting. And you don't have to put all that black pastel in. So if you want a dark background, don't use a black pastel. Use black velour instead. It makes life much, much easier. Let's uh, just sketch in some of the hairs going from the outside edge of the ear to the inner ear. So always go that way. Okay, never that way. Never from the inside out. Always from the outside in. And the same on this. Again, don't fuss necessarily with too much detail, especially at this stage. What we're after in this particular painting here is a much more atmospheric reasonably loose painting with not too much detail in it. It's going to rely more on the lighting and the atmosphere and things like that. 
Okay, so that's the ears, uh, and then we'll just sketch a little bit around the head. On the top of the head, there's always a little dip on the top of the forehead, like that. This runs down towards the brow, and that's obviously typical of any mammal, dogs, cats, wolves, big cats, and so on. Always that little dip, little furrow in the, brow, in the forehead, very down to the brow. So uh, we'll just do the outside first, then work in to the face itself. And the mountain lion here has obviously got very short fur, so it's got a little bit chunkier around the neck. So we don't need, again, to fuss with too much fur texture detail around the face, around the head. It's very, very short. Some nice, really big, powerful cheek muscles there. Bring that around. down towards the mouth and we're still getting a little bit chunkier around the neck so I'm just going to again with a rounded corner of the pass I'm just going to start to suggest that slightly thicker chunkier fur around the edges <coughs> and this will help to show these thick clumps which form individual little shapes and that's the important thing when you're dealing with clumpy fur is to get the, almost the outline of each clump of fur, but in a way that uh, conveys the texture as well. The important thing, as always, when you're starting to sketch the fur of any kind, short, long, thick, whatever it is, um, always make sure you've got the right, the appropriate length and the right direction. Observe which way the fur grows, how long it is, how thick it is, and so on. <coughs> so, that's the cheeks. Let's move into the face a little bit. We'll start around the chin, I think. Again, loosely sketching the furry edge of the chin. Like so. And the shape of the mouth above the chin. The dark bit there, we'll just show that bottom lip and how it's a little curve, like so. And the cheeks themselves, <coughs> we've got these little ridges here, which are the where the um, whisker follicles are. That gives you that lovely curve, really helps to show the curvature of those cheeks. And the same on the other side, we'll come back to the whisker follicles later on. There's our cheeks and the shape of the nose. It's important to remember which are the hard lines, which are not. Now the hard line in the nose is this line just above the nostril. That's where the flesh turns into the nostril underneath. And the same on this side, the edge of the nose. Those are the only hard lines you need. There's not a hard line around the lower part of the nostril. That's just where the opening fades out into the cheek. It's just a shadow, basically, so try to resist drawing a hard line underneath. The nostril doesn't have a hard line all the way around, just the top bit. And then it starts to come out again from the opening down to the cleft between the lips. <coughs> okay. A little bow shape we've got here for the top of the nose. That's covered with fur growing downwards. So again, first of all, you can draw that little bow shape if you want, and then just pop a little bit of furry edge over the top of that. Okay? Let's go to the eyes. <coughs> Probably the most important part when you're dealing with a portrait, I guess. First of all, I'm just going to roughly outline these little darker teardrop shapes in the middle of the eyebrows. Again, you'll find a lot of cats will have this teardrop shape. It may not be so obvious in some, but Lions, it's quite light brown. Uh, you've got animals like the mountain lion here, which is quite dark, and others in between. So around that, imagine this shape here is going towards you. That's the bulbous part of the eyebrow above. So it gives us that little sort of almost pie segment shape like that. <coughs> and again, when we come to do the tone, we'll lighten it to pull it out towards us. The shape of the eyes. Okay, so the important
important to remember that underneath that, the, eye, the eyelid, the eyebrow, there's a circle. That's the shape of the eyeball. So if you're painting what you see, in this case, which is the lower part of the eye, you've got to remember <coughs> that that's part of the circle. So if your lower part is too wide, i.e. from here to here, and you continue to draw that around, you're going to get a very, very big eyeball. So the way to check it is imagine there's a circle underneath that eyelid. You don't have to do this, of course, but imagine there is. That'll give you the appropriate size that I can so move that down. If I made it a little bit wider, and there's a tendency to make them a little bit wide from the photograph, then you can imagine that circle is huge. Okay, so it's always a good point to check. Let's sketch it out. The outline of the pupil, and then the eyelid, which is quite low, as in the case of most predatory animals, we've got a, a lower eyelid to shield the eye from the sun. And same one here, so we'll start with the eyelid on this side. Just get the shape first, and worry about detail later on. And again, looking for that. Round, perfectly rounded shape, making sure you sort of almost mentally trace that circle underneath, make sure it's not a huge circle underneath. So then we have a cheekbone just below the rim. The rim of the lower part of the eye is dark, the cheekbone is just below that, and again it's usually lighter. Lighter in colour of fur particularly in tigers and leopards and so on, but usually lighter in most cats, paler that is, and paler of course because it's, uh, it's coming towards you visually. So a little bit there I don't want, so I can just move that back with a finger. Okay, that's the basic shape of our eyes. And then coming down to the tear duct tear-duct shape, like so. So we're outlining the tear-duct, of course, with the white pastel. That's a kind of shape on both sides. You'll see that expression really coming along nicely now. So that's pretty much all we need to do to sketch the next level of details. Just give us a look to soften it off. <coughs> the key thing with uh, pastel on velour is always to rub your layers in. Uh, particularly, particularly important when you're working on uh, grey or sand velour. When you're working on black, if you rub that in too much or too early on, it's going to fade back quite quickly. But you do need to rub it in. One of the problems that people usually have and they email me about is saying they've followed the advice, they've rubbed it in, it all disappears. And they have to do it again and then again and again. Which is fine, that's what you'd expect. Black velour is no different from using a black canvas or black drawing paper, and white pencil, coloured pencils, whatever it is. Black, a black surface will always absorb more of your colour, be it white or be it uh, red, green, blue, whatever it is. It'll always absorb more of your colour. It's not a black hole, if you like, but you need to keep adding more layers. So even if you painted this in acrylic on a black canvas, you need more layers of paint than you would on a white canvas. Just have a little bit of patience. So I'm not going to rub it in too much at this point. I'll give it a little rub uh, when we've done the next bit. The next bit is adding some tone. We've got our basic shapes. Adding tone will add form. So three-dimensional form, in other words. So we've got to look for the pale bits now. Normally, we would go with uh, start with the medium, then the dark, and then the light would be the colour of the paper. In this case, the dark is already there, so we're going to go for a medium and a light. So it's important, using the side of your white pastel, to start light, go for the sort of darkest grey, if you like, to begin with, and adding more white to get it lighter where you want it. So a good piece of advice is when you look at your reference photograph, lean back and squint at it. That's the best way to see all the light and dark and mid grey bits and so on. Let's start around the eyes. So the eyebrows themselves. Now we're going to get this 
gently. We're going to get this sort of very pale fur in the brow. Give that a little rub to start with. And you can see that automatically start to draw that forward because it's rounding towards you. And that's the idea of adding tone adds form, three dimensional form. Don't make really it go over the edges of the drawn bits you've just done because you can put those back. Okay, where possible, when you're using the side of the pastel to create this form, try to go or try to follow the direction of the fur. Not crucial, but what it will do if you catch any edges of your pastel, regardless of the colour of the paper, at least it's going in the right direction. So upwards in this case and diagonally both sides. So we'll bring that down to the brow before the brow turns. The brow turns away from us about here, so it gives you that rounded form again and then comes out on the bridge of the nose. So that's kind of probably the high point of the shape of the brow. A couple more layers on there just to bring it out. And then it goes in and then starts to come out again. And fur on a cat's nose always grows down from between the eyes to the tip of the nose. You can make some downward strokes down towards that furry edge. Again, rub it. The rubbing <coughs> is quite important. Not only does it push the pastel into the fibres of the bulb, it also softens your edges a little bit. So if you've got any hard edges, good rub, especially on black, it's better on black, you can soften those edges nicely. Next thing is the cheap bones, if you like, or from the cheap bones down. So we started that pale bit of fur working down just to the corners of your cheeks, like that. It gives you a kind of mask. You can see there's almost a, a pale mask developing, isn't there? And again, there and there. Just keep adding light layers rubbing it until you've got it as light as you want it. So remember, lean back and squint. Check the turn. A little bit paler on the brow there. And again on this side. And maybe just a touch there. So I'm squinting at the photograph as well, which you can't see, but squinting between the two, try to get the appropriate tone perfect kind of balance between the two. It's a little far off, maybe a little bit lighter here. Just on the high point of the cheekbone. Give that another rub. So you can see bit by bit, even with a very light layer, it becomes quite obvious Of course, you've got that dark background. The aim is not to necessarily build up those high impact whites yet, but build them up gradually, bit by bit, and you add the colour and add some highlights and so on on top of that. But just make the general area of the hairs inside the ears a little bit paler. And again on this side. The great thing about working on black as well, you don't have to put everything in. You can leave quite a lot out from your photograph and just concentrate on the highlighted bits. allows you to be, I think, a lot more creative when you're working on black. So, think about our light source for a minute. So, <coughs> what I want to do on here, on the original reference photograph, we have quite a light area here. Well, I want that to fade back. I want it to be more of a dominant light coming from the right-hand side, catching the face this side. So, this is going to be my shadow side, that's going to be my highlight side. And remember, of course, you can adapt and put the light source wherever you want it to be, depending on what you want to highlight more. And creating a highlight on one side, a more dramatic highlight on one side, again, it gives you a great feeling of depth, gives you a great sort of feeling of three-dimensional qualities, and so on. So that's going to be our dominant highlight side. This, not so much. So just a little bit around the edges of those cheeks. Just a touch like that probably all we need, and then fading out into maybe some foliage in that bottom left hand corner. Uh, what we do next is touch there, we'll do the cheeks themselves, which 
On a mountain lion, they're usually quite pale anyway. Almost white hair, so that again helps to push that nose forward, and just fades back into those tear duct lines, tear duct, I'm sorry, whisker follicle lines. Please don't send me emails that you got that wrong. There we go, and finally the chin. It's going to be slightly darker up here where the bottom lip is, coming a little bit lighter down below. Again, we'll put some stronger highlights on it later. And then chunky fur. Use this idea of pastel just to create chunks of fur. You've got your guidelines already. So go within those guidelines there and just create those shorter, thicker chunks of fur. Like that. And we're going to let that fade out as well. Give it a little rub to soften them off. A little bit more down here. That's a great way of suggesting really thick chunky fur. So that is basically our terminal sketch done. Um, what I'm going to do next is add some base colours. And then we can build those highlights up as we go along. Remember, unless you're doing this totally in monochrome, with a white and a black pastel, then you don't need to progress any further than this at this stage. This here is to get some really good, strong base colours on and then work on that with our details and highlights a bit later on. So I've got two colours for this one. I've got a nice and golden brown. Uh, generally speaking, our mountain lion has uh, greyish brown fur, quite grey around the face, almost bluish grey, which will come to that shortly, and then brown on most of the body around the ears and so on. So we've got a nice little golden brown uh, soft pastel here, and the soft pastels are quite hard for soft pastels because the wallpaper, as you probably know by now, prefers harder pastels anyway, not too soft. So if they're too soft, they tend to just sort of stick on the surface of the paper and then it could easily fall off. So let's uh, start from the top of the head, work our way around and around the ears where we want that little hint of uh, golden brown. So we start around the edge of the ears. Now don't worry if that seems to come out quite strong to start with. First of all, we do, or I do like to have my foundation colours quite strong. Because the minute you start putting detail on the top, they'll fade back. So that come out quite strong to begin with. I think there's probably a little bit of excess just on that pastel, but don't worry. Once you rub it in, it knocks it back quite considerably, as you can see. So around the edge of that ear. And again, the great thing about using black is you don't worry don't have to worry about going over the edge because we can tidy that up later on. So working from the top of the head, coming down into the forehead, basically working our way around that central face mask. Again, try and stroke in the appropriate direction. How about that stop about here, I think. Give it a little rub. Work our way around the cheeks. Just remember, this left hand side is our shadow side, so that's not going to be too strong anyway. What we'll put on here will probably, probably be enough. Okay. Yeah, that might be plenty of colour in there for later on. We'll check later, but there might be plenty enough. The chunks of brownish fur. And they, of course, the black velour is going to help give it that sort of greyish brown look anyway. And again, around the neck. Notice where you've got the white already underneath, it makes that brown paler. When there is no white underneath, the brown automatically becomes darker because of the, the tone is under that colour be light, or whether it be the, the black below. Uh, I'm going to put a little base coat of the brown over the tip of the nose. And we're going to add a 
add a little bit more of another colour on top of that to get a more appropriate for it. It's not going to be brown, but we'll um, add some colour on the top of that later. Around this side, this is our light side, of course, our highlight side. So we can afford to go a little bit stronger on our colour. When I say go stronger on your colour, I don't necessarily mean press on any harder. What I mean is add more layers. Always use light layers. Add more layers if you want it to be a little bit stronger. So I can add another layer here. And that colour will be a little bit stronger. And that's the, basically not just the technique of using black ball, but any of them all. Build up light layers. The more you build up light layers, softer your painting will be, the greater depth you'll have of colour, tone and so on. So keep it nice and light. Lots of rubbing in between. Okay, next bit. Uh, I'm going to use a nice and pale blue, kind of sky blue if you like. And that's going to be for the cooler areas. So we might have a bit of a cooler area inside the ears. Again, that's a fairly soft pastel. Pastel pigment varies in softness. Usually uh, something that's pale, like this pale blue, has a lot of white added into it to make it even softer. So it can be quite chalky. Earth pigments are usually um, straightforward earth pigments, like umbers, sienas, for example, they're usually hard earth pigment anyway. So you, you've got to gauge it for yourself, which, how soft that pastel is going to be. The softer it is, the lighter the touch you need. So we'll put some hints of blue around this sort of grey mask. Um, it's going to look quite blue to begin with, I guess, but then again, you know, it's a foundation colour. And I think the foundation, even colour-wise, has to be fairly strong. In the same way that your foundation of tonal values has to be quite strong to hold any amount of detail and other things you've got to lay on the top of that. You might be putting hundred layers of detail on top of this, in which case you're not going to see a lot of that blue at the end at all. So don't worry about it. It's better to have a little bit uh, of a stronger colour than no colour at all, because that will soon disappear. Okay, so a little bit down the centre of the nose. Don't be too fussy with it either. You can see that I'm just more or less putting this colour in an area. It's an area of the nose. I don't worry about the edges becoming scruffy, anything like that. You'll be amazed how much that can be tidied up later on with the black pastel. So head to blue on the cheeks. So don't worry about it looking scruffy. It'll be as scruffy as you like with it. Try not to overthink it and be too careful with it. There we go. And a little bit around the cheeks, coming into that white fur. Maybe a little bit in the chin as well. Okay, I'll just add a little touch of blue over that brown. It down a little bit. I'm not going to go for the pink nose that we see on the photograph. Sometimes I think if you've got one bit of pink colour painting, just the nose in this case, and you paint it as such and nowhere else is pink, then it can look quite strange when you put it in a frame and stick it on a wall. People are, their eyes will be automatically drawn to the pink nose and nothing else. So the final bit on our base colour is going to be the green. So any green will do, this is kind of standard green. I'm going to use this as a base colour for the eyes. And then I'm going to put some blue over the top. The important thing is as long as you can see, even if it's just see your original sketch underneath, you don't have to worry about going over the edges. Now I can still make out the shape of the pupils, I can still make out shape of the lower part of the eye. We've got plenty of that green over there and then on top of that I'm going to 
put a little bit of the blue. So I want kind of blue-green eyes, which is pretty much what our mountain lions have. Almost blue-green. So at this stage, I've promised, a bit more spice coffee. Okay? Now the important thing is, I can see what's going on underneath. You might not be able to see it on the screen, but I can still see the shape of the eyeballs, I can still see the shape of the tear dots, the shape of the nose, and so on. That's important because then, when we come back to start adding details, you're beginning to use the black pattern and so on, we can really tidy this up. It's not for nothing that I can call this the ugly stage, because we've gone from what could potentially have been a lovely monochrome sketch or monochrome painting into something that's quite muddy now. So let's hold on to that image and don't be afraid of having this ugly stage. And when we come back to the next part, we'll start to tidy things up and you'll be amazed at what will happen. So now what we're going to do is introduce our hard black pastel and begin to tidy up this rather muddy looking underpainting if you like. That's what we'll call it, underpainting. We'll start to tidy it up a little bit with a few uh, details, beginning with our black pastel, then we can sharpen the eyes, nose, and so on. So let's, uh, to start it off, let's uh, work on the nose. So we see our nose has virtually disappeared. But now, if we bring back the hard lines that I talked about earlier, use a, try and find a nice rounded corner, there we are, rounded corner of our black pastel. One of those lines you had originally, you can see the difference already lovely sharp edge against the edge that's disappeared on that side. As long as you can still see your original white sketch underneath, then you're okay. So go straight on the hard lines first. So a little dimple there and that comes down into the cleft. The diamond shape there in the cleft between the lips. So you can see those are the hard lines that you only hard lines you need for the nostril. The rest, you imagine this uh, this side here. That's a hole under there, your nostril hole, and then it fades out inside the nostril onto the cheek. So it's kind of a fade out rather than a hard line with a softer edge on this side. Hard edge that side, soft edge this side. Remember, don't draw a hard line all the way around. It may appear to be that way on the photograph, but it's not. It's really not a hard line. If you've got cats of your own at home, you can risk getting scratched, of course, and then have a look yourself. Grab hold of your cat and see where the hard lines start and where they stop. A little bit of shading just on the lower part of the nose, because that's going back underneath. And I'm going to define this Heart shape a little bit more, a little ridge of dark hairs across the top. And we'll put back some of those paler hairs later on. And you can see that's looking a lot tidier already. And add a few little, um, oops, almost some pigmentation marks on the nose. A lot of cats will, will have little pigmentation marks, little dark spots in the nose as well, all adds to a little bit of realism. Uh, let's see, just move the nose up a little bit. You see the, the black pastel on top of this really does help to tidy it up quite a lot. Let's go for the mouth. So we might not be able to see it on the photograph, but there will be just a hint of a bottom lip there. Gives us that, that typical little shape there of our cat, big, big cats or little cats, and fading out underneath the cheeks each side. A few little dark flecks in the chin. Okay, so where should we go next? Let's, uh, let's try the eyes. So, the eyes, I can just about see. The lower part of the eye there, which I marked earlier on, I'm going to put the pupils in first. A little bit of the pupil 
showing underneath the eyelids. There and there. It's a bare light that's quite balanced, I think. A little bit rounder. Or more rounded on big caps than the small caps. Now let's try and get the shape sorted out again. So lowered upper eyelid, typical of any predatory animal. Coming down to the tear duct. And same on this side. And a nice lowered upper eyelid. Coming down to our tear duct. I'm going to try and get that lovely shape underneath. So let's have a look at this about. Remember the guideline now. If you do that shape, that lower rim, if you like, there, then the guideline. Imagine that's a circle and it'll tell you if it's too wide or not. That's about right. This is our lower rim as well. I'm going to try and balance that up with the other side. Again, roughly drawing that lower part of the eyeball. Imagine the circle underneath. It's not too wide. And that brings us down to our lower rim. Then we can sketch in the edges of our tear duct. The inside of the tear duct is usually paler, but it's like a little um, valley almost, with ridges each side, a little valley in the middle where the moisture runs down, like a mountain stream I suppose. There we go, we have a little rub, soften it off. So we'll do all the other details in the eyes shortly. Other dark bits, well we've got these little dark teardrop shapes of the eyebrows, bring those back. Again, think about length and direction of the fur. Straight like that. Uh, ears, we'll do ears next, then we'll do some uh, shading with the black hole, we've got it. So, inside of the ears, darker centre. Now, here I'm using a little technique for sort of cutting back. Almost like negative drawing. So start with the dark centre of the ear and cut back into the hairs, which are coming from the right hand side. So you can see that starts to give me a, a, an edge for those ears, a cut out edge. A little bit of shading on the inside of the ear. Again, you imagine that ear to be a, a kind of concave shape, round at the back concave in the middle, you're going to get a shadow just inside the edge of the ear, dark centre there and so on. And then dark shadow in that uh, pouch, that fluff of skin at the bottom of the ear. And then a little sort of dark ridge of fur underneath. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So we've got the ear hole itself and then we've got shading from the inside edge of the ear over the into the ear hairs, the pouch and the furry edge underneath. Let's repeat that over here. So dark centre of the ear, cut that back into the ear hairs. Gives you more of a shape and the shadow just inside the edge of the ear. Again, gives you that concave shape. And then we have the little pouch flap of skin there. And then just a little sort of dark edge or ridge of fur uh, joining the ears to the head. Okay, uh, we do the cheeks next. So Cheeks will start about here. We're using the flat of the black pastel for this, just to softly bring that shape out. So imagine the shape. This nose is round.
surrounded like that, and they're coming towards you, so they're going to have shadows each side, almost running down from the teardrops. So follow the teardrops down to the side of the nose, and bring it out around the edge of the cheek. And then we want some of that darkness to come back over the blue to create these whisker follicles where the whiskers grow out of. Remember on cats and dogs there are always four rows. Always make sure you've got four rows. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, yeah. You can double check them. Same on this side, around the edge. I just see those shapes come towards us a lot more. So, around the cheek, what we can do is just use a rounded corner just to get a little bit of texture in that pale cheek. You don't have to do a lot. If you want to, you can do loads, but uh, in the time allowed for this, we'll just do a little bit. Short little stabs of the rounded corner of the pastel, like that. So make sure we're going in the right direction. Again, as a reminder for those who have seen it before and those who, who haven't, then if you use that as the centre of your wheel, top of the wheel, the third row is up, down, right, left, and diagonals in between. So just a little bit of texture, short texture over that will help. Have to do a lot, but like I say, if you want to, you can. You can do upwards of 100 layers of fur texture on top of this if you want to, light and dark, colored fur, and so on. Some dark edges around the edges of the eyes, that side, around the edges of our eyebrows. Texture along the way. And up again. Keep stroking it. Another thing we can do while we're on the face is we can glaze some of this back. So if I use the, the flat side of that pastel softly, what I can do is I'll push these areas back and make a darker centre fold, if you like, centre fold down the forehead, coming down to the brow, and then if I want to, I can just glaze over that to push it back even more. So what we're going to get is a much more rounded form, from dark to mid to light, back to dark again. And that's just using the side of the pastel very gently, you can still see that shape underneath. If I press on hard, you can obliterate that, but I still want to see a little bit of that shape. And again, around this shadow side, and use the same sort of technique. Glaze over some of this to make it darker and uh, create subtle shadows. That's what glaze is all about, creating those nice subtle shadows. So glaze that away down here. And some of the chunkier fur that have definite edges around those chunks. Again, I can use the rounded corner of the black pastel define those a little bit more. That's right from my original sketch. I was outlining some of these clumps of fur. These are the shadows in between clumps of fur, of course. What they do and what they're doing now, of course, is making them look more three-dimensional. So you're creating the outlines after you've done the colour parts lighter parts and so on. That's one of the things when using black, you, know, you create these outlines almost afterwards, after you've got to the ugly stage, and you start to tidy it up, you create all these outlines then, and we'll have all this fading back. So use the side of that pattern, push all that back, that's our 
the shadow side. We don't want it to be too obvious. Push back as much as you want. Let's get rid of some of this bright line the edges we've got on that side too. Okay. A little bit more texture around the cheek. Then what we'll do is we'll work on these eyes. So a little bit more shadow. Like the brow as well, give that a more rounded look. You see, all the time you're changing these tones, you're creating different forms. So, we've got a highlight bit here coming out towards this, it's darker underneath. There is that uh, nose shape, maybe a little bit darker around the edges of the nose, picking on the left hand side. So, you can take any of that colour back. Any of those highlights, you can, oh, you can take it back into that past one. So, I promise we'll work on the eyes next. Put the eyes to completion and then we can use a white pastel to do all our final highlights. So the eyes themselves, we've got a little bit of colour in there. If you're not colour, maybe it's made a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue in there, I think. A little bit of green shine, a little bit of blue. Gently, of course, with a soft pastel, we'll don't overdo it. I can always put the pupil back in again, don't worry about that. So, what have we got? Well, the easiest way to deal with our eyes, and I think our eyes generally are very easy once you understand how to do them, is think of shadows, highlights, and reflections. The well, light's coming from the right hand side. So we're going to get just a hint of a shadow below the eyelid, so it's not direct above. But we're going to get a little bit of shadow on this side from the prominent brow. So first of all, try to do a glaze. A glaze below the eyelid, just onto the pupil like that. And then on the left hand eye, as we look at it, we're going to get a shadow in that corner means it shows that the light can't get past that brow. I'll tidy up the pupil while we're there. So on this eye, we're not going to get a shadow that side because the light can hit it. So instead we'll just get that little glaze of shadow underneath the eyelid instead. Think about your light, where the light's coming from. What it's going to hit along the way when it, before it reaches the eye, or the coloured part of the eye. That's our shadows. We're just checking the size of each pupil. Lean back and squint. That should do. Next thing is the highlights. Now, when I talk about highlights, I'm not talking about the reflection, the light bouncing off the eye. I'm talking about the light passing through the rounded, clear part of the eye, hitting the iris on the opposite side of the shadow. So, for example, if my light was coming from above, casting a deep shadow below, beneath the eyelid, it will cast a highlight on the iris, the flat coloured disc, at this point. If my light's coming from there, it will cast a shadow there on this side of the eye, and create a highlight on the iris on that side. So opposite side to your shadow. I'm going to use blue again. I like this colour. I think it will just give us a nice, soft highlight, curved disc almost on the opposite side of your light. That's where the light's shining up the iris. On this side, this eye will be on this side. Okay. And just a little curve. Like that. And then the final part of the eye will be our reflection. So following the light down, if the light's coming from the right, I usually do a little reflection on the right hand side of the pupil. Or coming from the left on the left hand side of the pupil. Now you can make that as sharp or as soft as you want. It depends on how strong you decide your light's going to be. So I'm going to use a slightly rounded corner of the hard white pastel and dab it on just below the shadow. So start to dab it on first, lean back, squint. If it disappears when you lean back and squint, it wants a bit more. That's probably quite strong enough. And a little hint. Just a hint on that side because we've got a lot 
not a shadow of coming through, so just a tiny little touch I think. There. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just use go back to the black and tidy up everything. Once we've got all that coloured bit in, we're not going to interfere with the, the black detail anymore, the sharp details, and now I can tidy it up. I can sharpen up that eyeball shape. Nice and crisp. Like so, lean back and squint. Yeah. And the same one here. If you're going to mess around with the eye, the coloured part, especially anymore, then you'll probably find you have to revisit this bit just to sharpen up your edges. It's that sharp black that's going to give us give our definition. Let's do that. Have a look at the squint again. Yeah, that's okay. So, back with our light, and we'll decide what we're going to put on our final highlights. So the light's coming from our right hand side, it's going to catch this side of the ear, that side of the ear, and so on. Of course we've got that golden brown underneath. If we use a rounded corner of our white pastel, and let's keep it nice and soft, that's going to give us a pale brown highlight. Press on, or if I haven't got a colour underneath at all, you're going to get a white highlight. Okay? It gives us a nice warm highlight on the ear. So that little bit just hitting the top of the head there, not too much. And so on this side, it's predominantly going to be around here. So gently, nice and soft. So the ears are quite thin around the edges, so it's not really a thick highlight. So we get more light on this part of the ear, the pouch for example, coming down from the head, give it a little rub. So it just highlights some of the hairs going from the edge of the ear over to the inside and around the base of the ear. Again, not too strong, if we're away from the light. When it comes to doing individual hairs and whiskers, of course, at the end, what you need to do is make sure you soften, almost get rid of your starting mark, not burying the roots. You don't want to see the, where the hairs begin, and they're all buried. You want to see the shafts of the hairs and the ends of the hairs. The same one here. Again, you can add more and more detail if you want to do that. Detail will do for now for us. Soft highlight around the base of the ear, just a little touch that's away from the light so we can see something going on there. And the brows. So this brow is going to catch more light than that brow. Imagine that's like a little mound or a hill. The light's going to catch it on this side. Again, Add more fur texture at this stage. Think about the length and the direction of, of your strokes. It will also knock some of that blue back, as you can see. So a few little flecks here, perhaps. Shorter flecks. Okay. And then along the top of the eyebrow. Eyelashes in. It's all adding fur texture as well, should you want it to. Soft rub. There we go. And on this side, we're going to get more light from the right hand side of our teardrop shape and the left. So Adapt your photograph. On the photograph it will show even light on both sides, but if you, you can adapt it according to your own lighting circumstances. Okay, a little bit soft around here for our eyelashes, not too strong. If they end up both being even, in terms of tone, you can always add more to the lighter side, which will make the left hand side obviously appear darker. Always the tonal values in your painting will change 
Five bit. Okay, so I'm going to move paper for just inside my eyes, coming up to the region of the nose, two strong, our cheekbones, and maybe softer on this side. But we still want to see it. We still want to see that pale fur. Softer on that side, stronger on this side. Okay, we've got a little bit more texture in here if we want to. Hazard, round a little light strokes. We can go back and add some more dark flecks and then some more light flecks. Add a bit more blue if, it, if your blue disappears. And just keep building those layers up. So a lot more on this side and not so many on this side. We'll put a few in. softer, a little bit more blurred by using the side of the pastel rather than putting a lot of sharp detail in. This makes that again just a very pale brown. So if it, if it has less detail, it will get pushed back. There we go. So around that dark edge of the cheek. closer to us, I'll just add a little bit more detail to that. Now we're going to do our highlights around the edge, where the light's catching the side of the ear, so final highlights, so a little bit stronger this time. And what I always do is try and start around the edge, get the outline of the edge sort of out there, and then the other way, the inside, so the inside of that highlight merges with the colour you have already. So we begin with the edge. Remember this is a, a soft, almost blurred edge around the cheeks there. But it's still going to be visible. And then join it with the rest by rubbing the inside. Lean back and squint. If you want to move a bit stronger, you go back and make you stronger. Try not to do it all in one go. It's always best to build that highlight up bit by bit, so make that a little bit stronger with the more the inside. The back and square now should do it. And the same around the edge of the neck. A few little gaps in this one because we've got that chunky fur texture, so that will fade out underneath, look away the inside. There we go. And then we've got the nose and the cheeks. So let's add bring those little pale hairs back. Just above the tip of the nose. A little bit of highlight, soft highlight on the right hand side of the nose here. The light's catching it. Bring it back and praise it. It's not even quite. Stroke. And a little bit more. 
this side and then a single turn on the left hand side I think. The only way to gauge that really is to do it and then squint. So we'll do this side. Single layer to begin with, in between those whisker follicles. So finally, if you want to decorate that a little bit more, you can always put a little bit of greenery in the foreground so the out of focus foliage. Use the side of your green pattern with these sort of haphazard square shapes, twist them to in your wrist, and then rub them round and round and they disappear. So it just gives you a hint of foliage. Uh, the line is probably peeping out from behind the bush. Something or someone. And that just gives the corner of the round and round. As unusual black, just tidy up anything else. So if you've got any fingerprints on there, anything that needs to be got rid of, use your black, cover that up. Tidy up there, tidy up your edges of the ears, for example. Quite scruffy there, and they say it's not like any reason. Maybe you want to darken that, that side of the ear a little bit more. On there, and you fade into the darkness of the, the den or the cave. And initial black has a sort of reverse highlighting to them. Right, so I think we're about there. Try a bit more detail in. Eyes or any eyelashes, and don't forget, of course, when you have black, you have a side of a white pastel. Okay, 
you're going to enjoy this one. Um, it's definitely something that you can work on even more. Try if you've not tried Black Bottle before, do try it. It's um, one definitely forgiving colour as far as more is concerned. And it's amazing what dramatic effects you can get with just a, a few colours and using the black equally as much as the white. So don't forget it's coming up on the screen the details for how you can all your home workshop kit, uh, other details for the YouTube uh, video and so on. And we'll see you next time.